right. Good morning and welcome to the June 8th meeting of the Adrian Main Street Board of Directors and welcome everybody. I appreciate you being here. Oh, there's Cole. Uh, do you have roll call? Do you, everybody's. All right. In front of you, you have the agenda for today's meeting. Um, if there are any additions or, or anything that you'd like to add to the, to the agenda? If not, I'll accept a motion to accept the agenda. There's been a motion, is there support and there's support. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Also in front of you, you have the minutes from our May 11th meeting. Um, you, those should have been in your packet. Um, and Jeff, we apologize. We'll make sure you get everything on timely fashion in the future. Um, are there any additions, corrections, deletions on the minutes? If not, I entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Is there a motion? Is there support? Support. All right, there's motion to support. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed the same. All right, the record reflect the minutes been accepted by unanimous vote. All right, we have our Main Street director with us today. He took the mayor's seat, as you can see. So I'm going to start handing it over to give his report and some of the things he's been working on since uh, we hired him back. Was this? 16th? 16th. 16th. So go ahead, Jay. Uh, thanks, Dusty. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I look forward to doing a lot of things and really moving along with the momentum that's that's been in place and, and is happening in downtown. Uh, first thing, uh, I got a kind of a laundry list, and we're going to come up with a cadence for some communication so we're not sitting here listening to me talk forever uh, during the meetings. Um, but the first thing I want to address is DARA hours. Um, in the, in the social district during first Fridays, uh, uh, Michelle pointed out that the band on the, in North Main Street doesn't finish until about 10 p.m. And so we have a number of people that are out walking around carrying Dara cups and uh, the social district ends at 10 p.m., which can be very problematic for the liquor control board and, and other situations for us. So I uh, went to the pre-meeting for the commission on Monday, proposed extending the social district to 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, and then anticipating a, an event on New Year's Eve, uh, proposed extending it to 1 a.m. Uh, New Year's Day. Uh, they were very receptive. Uh, they didn't vote because I wanted to come here and share that with the, with the board of directors here first to make sure that we were all in alignment with it. Um, I don't think there will be uh, any negative impacts. Uh, there was a situation over the weekend, which I'll address in a minute, but I don't think that adversely it would affect the social district. Um, and if anything, I think it might help our businesses downtown um, with some other opportunities available. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those, but I think it's- Do you need, a, do you need us uh, to a motion or support for the commission? I don't think so because the commission was gonna act without one. And it's just that we're a participating body. I don't is, there, so. is there anybody on this board that's concerned with the change? No, but can you just address that what one of the points you brought up to the city commission at the pre-meeting was that um, most of the businesses closed by midnight. Right. Yeah. yeah, so we took a straw poll um, on Monday and, and kind of looked at all of the, the establishments that participate in the social district and um, I think all of them close by at least midnight. Nobody's staying open to that 2 a.m. any longer, whether it's staffing or, you know, liability or just the, the other concerns that they have. So um, that gives us a, a, a nice cutoff. We can stop the DARA service at 11, the bars close at 12, and there's no, you know, the, the, the last thing we want to do is stop DARA at midnight with the bars closing at midnight because then there's people walking around outside of the, the hours. So I think it's a logical cut. I think it's, uh, you know, as it was said, nothing good happens after midnight. So uh, I think it's good for everybody there. All right, well, so there's no concern. Um, Jay, you can move forward with that. Excellent, thank you. Uh, the next one is just a, a point of information. Food truck fees for, for the market and First Fridays. 
Um, as you know, or, or may not know, I'm also the uh, market manager for the Adrian City Market and the market that happens on first Fridays. Um, we've been engaged with several food trucks, uh, trying to get them to participate. And what's happened is we've gotten a lot of pushback on the fee. If you're an out of city resident, the fee is $500 annually to participate. Um, now the thought behind that was you could pop up on a Tuesday or a Thursday or whatever, and they're just not doing it. That We don't have the, the following or the infrastructure to do those things. So the proposal, and it was, it was um, accepted by the city commission was to lower that fee for just um, the farmer's market and first Fridays to $250 annually. So that, get, that leaves them uh, 18 events at the farmer's market and four first Fridays for that fee. Um, as a recap, uh, I'd gone around and talked to a couple of businesses uh, after the first Fridays event and we had um, record sales, our, our great weekends, you know, there was a, a lot of participation and we had four food trucks at the market. There was one in a special area by, by Nova's and um, we saw, you know, our hour and a half waits at Sauce and other in the pub and other restaurants. So um, it's a, it's a one year try. We're gonna get the information and provide the feedback and, and share that information, but the impact that we saw, I, I don't think was even significant from, from first Fridays. Uh, the market, we've had one food truck, maybe two. Um, the nice thing is that uh, vendors or vendors, veterans don't have to pay a fee. And so a couple of food trucks that we have have been mostly veterans um, up until this first Friday. So any questions or concerns, I'll be happy to, to take those, but we've uh, already initiated with the city for that approval. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Correct for any any space that you get within the city. So if you're going onto private property, there's no fee associated. If you're at the farmers market, no fee. If you want to set up at a local park, there's no fee. Yes. Excellent. All right. Perfect. Uh, the next thing, uh, Greater Lenawee Chamber of Commerce, uh, Matt Schwartzlander from the chamber, I uh, had a meeting with him last week and Matt approached me uh, about an opportunity that he wanted me to share with the board. Um, there's been some, some discussion between the uh, city of Adrian and Matt about services and what those look like and um, return on investments. And in an effort to bridge that, oppor that, you know, that opportunity, Matt wanted to offer to have someone from Adrian be on the board. He, he recommended that I be on the chamber board. Uh, and then Matt also was looking at an opportunity for him to be on the DDA board, whether it, it, it's an actual board member or an ex facto position or, or something of those nature. Um, so I'm open for questions and discussion and um, obviously there's gonna be a considerable amount. So Jay, you told me that um, you know this job, the market job, and and being at city commission meetings and the amount of work that you're going to be doing, um, how do you feel about the time you would have for something like this? Oh, oh well, I also have a previous commitment. I'm, I'm elected school board trustee, and that takes up another considerable amount of time. Um, I don't know what kind of benefit that I would add value that I would add to it, if, because attending those meetings would be difficult. Because I, you know, I also have two young daughters, and I try to be as active as I can in their lives as well. So um, there, there's a concern for that. Um, I, we didn't discuss commitment time, but um, I, I have a concern about that as well. Mr. Chair, yes, I think it might be a, a, an advantage. Might be an advantage if we um, thought that maybe one of our board members might be on their board, and one of their board members might be on ours to be able to share information back and forth as a first step to building that relationship. I, I think there could be some conflicts of interest regarding directors being on because they have their own agenda they have to work on and voting for or against that might be an issue, I, I don't know. Jay, do you know what the time commitment is for that chamber board? I don't, but I it, it, to also address Mark's concern. I mean, as, as we're all aware, I'm a co-owner of a business in the city of Adrian, and, um, and we also happen to be chamber members. So it gets very muddy and perceptions can be reality. Sometime we had a situation over the weekend, um, actually on Friday, 
where my wife had posted something for our business um, and it got shared by the chamber, but other events that were taking place didn't get shared by the chamber. And so I had to have a conversation immediately that like, you're putting me in a bad spot. It's, it's difficult, you know, and it's nobody's fault, but those things happen. And so I have to be above board with all of those transactions. You know, I made that commitment to do those things. And so I had to explain to both the city of Adrian and to, to Dusty what happened. So um, I, I don't know what the answer is. I just don't, I, I just know that it would be difficult for me with my commitments. If we were to, to want to adopt something like this, it would have to be addressed in our bylaws. Um, and right now we have full DDA board at this point. Um, last time we really addressed the bylaws was the advisory capacity of Mike Orlando and Cole, you know, and we made those changes. Um, we updated it and like, if we were gonna say um, a board member from the Greater Lenaway Chamber needs to be on this board, to be needs to be written in the bylaws and vice versa. So the question is, does the board have the desire to move forward on, on this um, and structure things differently? I agree with you. That's definitely fair. Do you agree? Is that a motion to table? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Yeah. there was no motion. It was just a discussion at this point. Yeah. Okay. It was just a discussion. All right. We don't have to table that. All right. Move forward. Uh, the next thing, uh, an individual came to the city discussing the EV chargers uh, that we have in the, uh, in the public parking lots. And he is putting together a business plan where he wants to uh, utilize those uh, for an advertising pilot. Uh, basically the premise is he's an electric vehicle owner and notice that most people, when they go to charge in cities, uh, they spend the, the 10 to 30 minutes inside their vehicle on their phones. His plan, and there's a video that I can share with all of you later. I didn't, I didn't queue it up for today. Um, it's just a little cartoon, but basically to entice those vehicle owners to go into the city, whether it's through discounts or advertising through, I think initially he's gonna start with a QR code for the pilot. Um, and then it may transition into some kind of video board that's at the, at the charging station. Um, this pilot, there's no charge to us or the businesses for this initial pilot to see, you know, kind of proof of concept. Um, I just advise that if he's going to go to one business, he needs to go to all the businesses in that area to present it to him. In, in fairness, I don't want him isolating what he thinks would be the best targets. I want it to be presented to everybody to give them that option. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Unless there's any concerns, I will just move forward with him as well in the city. Jay, did you get any feedback on there being enough chargers? Because I've noticed, I've been paying attention and there's a vehicle, there's at least one to two vehicles char charging all the time when I'm checking over there. And I'm seeing a lot of a lot of electric vehicles in Adrian now. Like when I'm driving through, there's there's quite a few and it concerns me, do we even have enough now? And is that something we need to address in the future? Um, I know that was something we thought could happen and I'm, I'm noticing that they are charging and using it, but I'm seeing a lot more vehicles just sitting there that are not charging that are definitely electric. And it makes me wonder if we need to investigate that further. Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, commend the, the DDA board and the city for uh, their progressive decision to put that charger there. It's a difficult choice when, when it may not make economic sense, but it is really a great move for our community and really just to thank the board for supporting that and the idea that we need more, we will need more. It's not if, it's when. So I know there were grants available um, to really finance this the last time around. I still think they're on the board. I still think there's plenty, there are opportunities there. So um, Jay, I, do, I would say that uh, Matt was a big part of this. Yeah, uh, yeah, Matt was a big part of this, this advertising part. And I can reach out to him to see if we've got records that can show actual usage on electricity in that, in that area. I'm sure we have some kind of report that we can pull and I can report back with Excellent. that information. Any other questions on that? Move forward. 
Um, upcoming meeting with Michigan Main Street. So uh, through the, the Main Street process that we've been engaged in, um, it's a four part series. I will be scheduling within the next couple of weeks, uh, part three for everyone to attend. We'll choose a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, probably in the morning. It's a three hour meeting that will um, really help us set long-term goals, short-term goals, look at the, uh, the data that they've pulled in. Uh, but I wanted to just preface that for everyone to, to know that it's coming. I just don't have a date set yet. I have to get with Michigan Main Street to, to establish that. Excellent. Um, the next thing, uh, Michelle's gonna pull up a, a, a <clears throat> website for you to give you a little bit of idea of what I, what Michigan Main Street expects of me. So every month on the 10th, by the 10th of the month, I have to submit a report. Um, thus you neglected to tell me of this in the interview process. <laughs> or there might've been, I might've asked for more money or uh, some contingencies here. Um, so this report is pretty complex. You can see on the left-hand column, there's, I think there's five or six areas and, and I'm not gonna bore you with each one, but Michelle, can you just on the new business, click on that blue, yeah, perfect. So that opens up. So every new business that comes in, I have to provide specific information on them, the business name, address, number of employees, a, a lot of information. That has to happen for new businesses, closed businesses, expanded businesses, business that move out of the DDA district. Um, and that's just business part. Then there's another for properties and there's another and volunteer hours I have to track. And so there's a, a, a number of things that, that have to happen. Um, I won't kid you, I'm setting you up for something a little bit later in the meeting so you understand <laughs> where it's coming from. But I also wanted you to understand that there's a lot of things that I do behind the scenes that, that you may not be aware of. Um, and I'm happy to share those with you, but this is one of the big ones. Uh, I also have to go back to October uh, to fill in the data because it's an annual report and it's compiled based on the monthly data that you provide. So um, those of you that are more active in the downtown community and may know some things that I don't, I may be uh, asking for some assistance to, to get that information uh, as we continue to build our database and move forward. Okay, Michelle, thank you. Any questions about the reporting aspects? Of I'm sorry that Dusty didn't keep up on it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. You just, you know, He'll I didn't be want first to, to help you. <laughs> Who would lead with that? How many, <laughs> right? how many cases of Red Bull do we need to drop off of your office? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, before I go to the last thing that's on, that I put on the agenda, there's a couple other things that I want to, I want to address. Um, the sculpture incident over the weekend, um, it was very upsetting. I happened to be come across it and reported it to the to the Adrian Police Department, fill out the police report, um, and, and follow up through that. Um, and, and it leads me kind of into our to our next thing. Uh, it, it, and obviously, we know that it's been resolved. Well, it's in the steps of being resolved that the person has come forth and the police did it did an excellent job with their social media campaign and things are, are taking place, and and you know, we'll come to a resolution. Um, but it brought something to, to my mind. Um, that was kind of a, an incident response. You know, I, I had to rely on Michelle. Fortunately, I, I was able to get a hold of her on the weekend. It's like, who do I call? What do I do? What's the communication? What does that look like? Um, and that brought up the parklets. And in my thought process, and this is really a discussion. I'm not looking for a resolution today. I'll come up with a plan and present it to you. But what happens if somebody hits a parklet? Who's the responsible party? Who do we call? How do we get that out of there? If it's damaged, how soon can we get it repaired? So there's a lot of steps in there that need to be considered. Um, and we never thought this would happen to a sculpture, right? So we're, we're learning and, that, and that's a good thing, but we also have to be aware of the things that, that we're responsible for as a main street and make sure that we can take care of those as quickly as possible to not be a public nuisance, a hindrance or a danger. So um, if you have anything on that that you'd like to offer, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I, I don't think we need to take up time with it today, but I wanted to address it to let everybody know that that's a concern that we need to, we need to be on top of. And I'm sure there'll be other things going forward that we'll have to, we'll have to address as well. Mm -hmm. um, last thing, uh, in talking to several businesses around the parklets, getting feedback, um, one of the things that, that was there was, um, was signage. Um, and talking to, to Jude at um, Mammoth in particular, customers will sit there and think that it's part of Mammoth. Um, 
you know, and so they looked at Mammoth for cleanliness and, and everything else. And that's kind of, uh, you know, concerning for the other businesses around that want to use it because they want their customers to feel comfortable there as well. So we're exploring some signage that would just say public space, please pick up after yourself. I know just a, a little thing, something simple like that. It could be more detailed, but the more words, the less people read it. It would be honest with you. I mean, we're in a very, you know, quick society that lack uh, attention to, to details. And so I think something crisp, clean, whether it has the DDA logo and the city of Adrian logo because of the partnership, and then just that public space, please pick up after yourself. Um, we're not leading anybody on into other uses or other areas. Um, but it knows that it doesn't belong to anybody and, you know, and maybe we can even put a sponsored by Main Street DDA on there as well or something along those lines. Jay, would it make sense to put a QR code for your district's app on there? We've, we've discussed that as well. Absolutely. You know, we're, we've got some things coming up a little bit later that'll show some integration. And so I think that's an excellent idea. It's a cool app, by the way. I've been messing around with it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just download it. Uh, awesome. Okay, well, no questions about the, the signage. Um, I will present something. We'll, we'll come together with a solution, but I think the, the less is more in that particular situation. It's clean and crisp and, and works from there. Um, the, the district's app, I sent a, a notification out to everyone about it. Um, we're really starting to populate it and it'll, it's gonna, it has some very unique features. So when I uh, spoke to the owner of the, the app and it was getting some information about it, um, the app is free and there's no cost to the businesses. And I told him that's a horrible business model. And he said his wife agreed with him. So uh, the, the way that they make money in that app and it's ingenious and we may explore it at some point, they have Bluetooth beacons and the beacons cost $200. And you can purchase one to a hundred of these beacons if you want to. And then there's an annual fee of $20 per beacon. So that's how they make their money with the recurring revenue. But what the beacons do, let's say if we wanted to use them for the art walk that we have, we could put a beacon on each mm -hmm. item. If you have the app open and walk up to it, mm -hmm. it pops up information about that particular feature. You can do audio. So you could have the sculpture or the artist tell about it, where their inspiration came from. Videos and photos can pop up while you're there as well. So it's, it's a pretty unique feature. They also use it a lot for scavenger hunts and different events like that. So if we wanted to do you know, a retail scavenger hunt downtown, we take a selfie in front of a certain product, you go into the particular store and it pops up and gives you the instructions on what you need to do. Well, you know, whether it's tag downtown Adrian, tag the store or whatever. So there's some opportunities for some, some advertisement, a small you know, reoccurring fund for the, for the DDA to do and different things there. But the real features that we like on the app that are free, it gives an opportunity for the businesses to claim their business, um, put information in there, connect to their website, all of their social media. There's an opportunity for them to put specials on there. And if they do that on the map itself, a green dollar sign appears on their token on the map. So you know that something's happening special at that event or at that store. The other option is we can do event calendars. We had one for first Fridays. And so we can call out where the bands are, where, where different things are happening downtown, which may be good for Artalicious Don, where you could call out the specific artists throughout the, throughout the event. So they, people know where they are, where their booth locations are. I'm gonna start using it for the farmer's market so you can see what vendors are there. Um, so there's a lot of free applications that make it really neat for us to do. Um, we're going to be, I'll be starting a walk and talk in the next couple of weeks, going to the businesses and sharing information with them and meeting them. And, and I'm going to bring this up to them. It's free. It's on the, the nice thing about it too. It's they, once they claim the business, they own it. They're responsible for their information and in, in putting their data in there. Obviously, if we have businesses that aren't uh, tech savvy, we can work with them and help them. We've got the ability to do that. Excellent. All right. So he's been busy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a little bit <laughs> you know, we got more to work on later yep. in, the, in the program any questions for jay on all of this all right jay thank you thank very you. much we'll move over to brad for the finance committee report yep so i distributed that to everybody um only only notable changes between last month and this month is the city has stepped up and 
deposited the entire commitment of 35,000 for this fiscal year, which is great. So Jay, you're gonna get paid. <laughs> and um, other significant thing, I guess would probably be, um, oh, well we, do, we did cut a, a few checks, one to Matt Mills for um, the parklet construction and then for the materials. So um, those came out for the one that was finished in May and then this, this month we'll be cutting those checks for the ones um, that were finished in June. So um, other than that, there's not any major significant change. We're still on track for a surplus this year, probably around $30,000 or so surplus, but we still have some commitments that, that are you know on the, on the horizon, so. Excellent. And those surpluses will quickly disappear next year unless we get on the the fundraising. So, right. Absolutely. Yep. Any questions for Brad? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the finance report as presented. There's been a motion. There's support. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed the same. Excellent. Thank you, Brad. And Greg is not here today, so what was he? Is he hidden behind there? I'm here by I'm here virtually. <laughs> virtually. Hey Greg, how's it going? Doing okay. How are you? Good, good. Anything to report from the city that, that uh I will mention as you know very, very well, Dusty, that we had a meeting yesterday with the uh, representatives of the Riverfront Project, Adrian Development Collaborative. Uh, which took the form of uh, Dusty and Bob Doyle, their landscape architect from uh, Smith Group, JJR. And we, we did it in the fashion that we do our pre-application meetings. We had all the uh, related uh, department staff there um, to pro provide their input and expertise. The plans aren't far enough along to review, but uh, we kind of discussed the process going forward and Feel free to supplement what I say that's dusty. Right. Uh, but we kind of envisioned uh, uh, three components to the to what's happening there. I think you all know that uh, uh, the development group plans uh, apartments sort of in, uh, well, on the Telegram property uh, on Winter Street there where uh, uh, they were successful in acquiring that property. But there's a broader vision uh, related to the riverfront and to the Winter Street uh, um, streetscape. And, and so those would be the three components, the private development component, the winter street component, and the uh, parkland trail, riverfront, river condition component. Uh, and the, the latter, well, the streetscape and the, and the park component will be, will end up being a city project. So we talked about the city retaining Bob Doyle's firm um, to work on those and to work on grant opportunities. We, we are not staffed up um, to do an adequate job of uh, tracking and pursuing and writing uh, uh, grants for the, each of those opportunities. And so uh, that's something that I expect to be bringing to the city commission, possibly at their next uh, meeting so that we can uh, stay on track with that. It's, uh, you know, will be transformational for downtown. And uh, I thought you might be interested in hearing a little bit about it. Any, anything you want to add to that, Dusty? Yeah, the, the Agent Development Collaborative has um, been working with Eagle now and, and it, it positive results has happened as of recent. Um, Eagle will now be providing extra testing of, the, of all the sites. Um, you don't even have to put the application in, they just do it. Um, but you have to sign off on it. Um, so they're going to be moving forward with testing the, most of that site now. Um, we're in still continued discussions with DTE and their properties. And as that works forward, um, you know, great opportunity coming our way. Um, so it's a, it is transformational. Um, we're, you know, Bob Doyle with the Smith Group was excellent. He brought us uh, scheduling when those applications are due how many different agencies we're gonna be working with um, and he's on top of all of it for us. So um, very exciting stuff. And as it, as it progresses, I'll keep everybody informed. All right, anything else, Greg? Uh, well, I also will mention in terms of transformational downtown projects, uh, Croswell's uh, acquisition of the farm 
property, and I believe uh, Jerry can update us if she's there. I think she's there. Uh, I believe they put in their application for a RAP grant um, uh, this week, and uh, or, or if last Friday maybe, and. Uh, you know, the city uh, very strongly supported that. Of course, the DDA had a resolution in support, as did the city commission, and I wrote a letter of support for that as well. And we would envision likewise that uh, there could be a, 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 some public participation in that in terms of uh, placemaking and uh, uh, the uh, parking for the project. Uh, so fingers crossed for that. It's a big ask and very competitive process, uh, but... Uh, uh, I'll let uh, Jerry fill in anything I missed on that if she's there. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Not the mic last minute. Yeah, we did. We successfully for. submitted uh, last Friday. So Excellent. Got the email response and uh, thank the city, thank Main Street DDA board for the support around that. It, it's a big ask, $5 million on a $12 million project. So, uh, don't know what will happen, but we feel good about the application we put forward. Excellent. So uh, just to bring that up, I think I'll bring it up now since we're talking like that. So I wrote a letter of support for, for um, that project um, and I also wrote a letter of support for Hammermans, which is going into the same process. Um, I didn't have the authority of this board to do that, but I thought like, you know, there was a deadline and, and we didn't really know about it at our previous meeting. So I think it's fair that we, you know, as a board, we should accept a policy that anybody that's going for a grant in our downtown, that's one of our great businesses um, or organizations um, and the like, that we should support it. Um, so with that, I'm asking for forgiveness <laughs> moving forward, but I thought it was a reasonable risk to take on behalf of this board um, to make sure a letter of support was put in for, for good projects. Mr. Chair, I think in the future, it'd be great if that issue got on the agenda for this board. I mean, if somebody's going to go for a big nut, they ought to know about it far enough advanced to give us heads up on it. I, I think it should be at least on the agenda before it is the letter signed. Thanks. Understood. Any other comments on that? I will make sure that we bring that policy forward in our coming meetings. All right, move forward to promotion committee and downtown events calendar. Um, Hot Wheels recap, Michelle, big, big party. Yeah, so um, that might have been record attendance Friday night. Um, it's always hard for me to tell because I'm going from one place to the other, but um, I put it this way, at about 6.30 or so, I could no longer get uh, the golf cart down through the street because there were so many people. I had to actually go around on the main streets to get from one end of downtown to the other. So it was, it was packed. Um, Everything went really well. We have a few tweaks with the car show to work out. Um, both of our, our police chief and fire chief were there Friday night. Um, our police chief helped with a couple issues. We, our biggest issue right now is people are going around the barricades, which is a huge, huge safety issue. And it's always my top anxiety factor for first Fridays. Um, so we're talking about getting some reserve officers to be posted at those other entrances um, to deter that. Because um, we actually had car show cars coming in after we were closed down at Toledo and Maine where the band was setting up and then driving, <laughs> trying to drive through downtown. So it's, that's a huge problem. Um, so Jay and I and the chiefs are going to meet with Dave that runs the car show uh, this Friday and talk through a lot of that. Um, we didn't really have any other hiccups than that. Um, and, and it's always, those are always minor. Once the car show gets set up for the most part, everything else runs really smooth. Um, I don't know if you all were there and saw the little uh, tykes and you know trikes parade that the gallery did. That was really cute. We had a movie at the end of the evening, um, which we had a decent turnout for. Um, we showed cars, so that was kind of a fun feature to have. Um, we don't plan on doing that again the rest of the summer, but I'd like to do that at least for one first Friday each summer, have a downtown movie. I think that's kind of cool. So that's kind of it for first Friday. Um, I know I talked to a couple of business owners. I know Jay has, and it sounded like everyone did really well. 
I know um, one of the ones I talked to said that they did double what they do on a normal Friday night. So I, it still, besides being a good community event, it also still seems to be really benefiting the downtown businesses, which is good to hear. Um, I think that's all I have for First Fridays, unless anybody else has any questions or observations. Michelle, I just want to say thank you so much that, you know, you go above and beyond and you take a lot of heat when you get angry car show people, which I know happened. Um, and I do want to let you know that a few families that I know um, stayed and watched cars and they just thought that was such a great addition and they really um, were grateful for that that family event to happen at the end of First Friday and they really enjoyed it. And I just know a lot of people um, were very impressed by the event in general and just the amount of people and all the activity and the excitement. My daughter was here visiting from New York and um, hasn't lived here now in like five years and couldn't believe it. She's like, this, why didn't this happen when I was in like a teenager? She goes, this is what I wanted Adrian to be like. And she just couldn't believe it. And um, just was very impressed by the, by the people, by the bands, by everything that was happening downtown and just the excitement and the energy level. And I know that you're here until the wee hours of the next morning, a lot of times doing um, things behind the scenes and just and dealing with people and dealing with all of the logistics. So thank you very much, Michelle. So Michelle does an excellent job and I, through my engagement last year, I knew what she did um, and I really got to be a part of it this time. And it, I was literally running from one end of the city to the other all night long. So I have a, a new appreciation for, for what she does and how much work she actually does, uh, but she doesn't stop there. And that, that was the thing that was really encouraging to me when we got into the office on Monday, we kind of, you know, did a decompression of, of what happened and what we can improve and, and what the opportunities were and really identified those, those opportunities. And um, one of the things that came out of it, and it, it'll be beneficial for me, um, but it'll also be beneficial for the events going forward. We're gonna uh, put together a survey to send out to the businesses to get some feedback, get things like, how much did your sales increase over a normal Friday? What does that number look like? So we can share that with businesses that don't participate to encourage them to participate. Um, you know, were there things you wanted to change? Were there things that, that work for you that don't work for you. I'm not saying that it needs to be improved by any means, but if you don't have, ask the questions, you don't know the answers. So um, we're gonna put that together and send that out to the businesses and, and get some feedback from them as well. Yeah, I was, I was going down to see Michelle in Four Corners and she was a little bit frantic at the time. And then a couple of cars blew past her and decided to park the way they wanted it. And then she's walking down there and this dragster floors it and stops just behind her. And just to show you the kind of things she's experiencing out there. Um, so yeah, the reserve officers will be a much needed add and we appreciate the city's partnership. Again, that's, that's money um, and their support of the project or of the, of the events. Um, so yeah, we'll put some policies in place moving forward. Thank you, Michelle. Any questions? Any work on the retail guide that we need to mention today? Uh, yes, as of yesterday, our uh, design volunteer does have a design for that. Uh, we're working on populating that with content. And uh, in light of the uh, district's app, wanted to review how much detail we're putting into each one of these, or do we just want to direct people to that app for a lot of the more detailed things, photos, all that fun stuff, because the businesses can populate that themselves. And Michelle, I believe, uh, was also working on some grab and go rack cards specifically for the hotels and other places where people just need something quick and skimmable to be able to grab and see what's available. Uh, Michelle, did you have anything that you wanted to show on those today? I do. So um, keep in mind, this is just a, a really rough draft. Um, that I did yesterday, but we were talking about just doing kind of some simple rack cards for maybe one for dining, one for retail, uh, maybe one with arts and entertainment and stuff like that, um, like a front and back. So it's going to be kind of hard. So I'm going to zoom out first if you want to look on your screen over there. Oops, hang on, let me screen share too. So I'll zoom out first so you can see, this is what the front of the card would look like. And this is what the back of the card would look like with uh, the district's app 
and um, the QR code for it. And like I said, this is just an example, um, but something you know that's relatively simple that has the businesses, their number, their address, and you know what what type of food they have. If it's a retail card, you know what type of retail it is. If it's arts and entertainment, etc. Um, <clears throat> until we can get a more significant, detailed guide going, um, this is something we can do relatively quickly. Get into hotels. Um, you know, I think of like when I go out of town and I'm in a hotel and I want to order some food. Something simple like this is perfect because you can just pick it up and you know figure out what's closest to you and what you want to eat. Um, so that's just what we've been working on. Excellent. Anything else on that? Michelle, one of the most common comments we get from the Croswell patrons is they can't believe that parking is free in downtown. So just something that you might want to put on a rack card doesn't mean it's free for all time, but it's currently free. <laughs> um, so just, you know, if you're thinking about getting in your car, it's real easy to recognize Applebee's has free parking. Most downtowns do not. Very good. Uh, May want to put on, you have a charging station down there as well. All right. Thank you. Any questions? We continue. All right. The next is the formation. There's an organization committee we we're trying to bring together, but and I put this on the agenda here. Or actually, me and Jay work on the agenda now. He helps me a lot. Um, stakeholders. We need to schedule a committee meeting. So, Jerry, I know you were on the fundraising committee. Um, can you remember Devaney? Would you uh, on the fundraising committee? Jay would be a part of that discussion as well. We need to build the database. We need to really put this everything in motion. I haven't been able to get her done. So get ready for an invite. We're gonna bring everybody together that's on that committee and um, start working diligently on, on our ask. All right. Our delicious. Well, not a lot to update, but um, I've been in contact with the Journey Tribute Band, and then Meredith got me some information on a dueling pianos um, group as well. Um, the band for Journey is going to be up to $6,000 if we do decide to move forward with them. They only play for two hours, though, so it would only be an eight to 10 event where other performers would perform up to three to four hours for probably half the amount of money. So um, if we want to move forward um, with this, I still need to confirm sponsors because a lot of people thought, or my two main sponsors thought I was going to get Phoenix Theory back again, but they're already booked. And so I still got to negotiate with them if they want to still commit that kind of money that they did last year. But if they do, um, I guess I'm going to need approval to go into negotiations with uh, this with the Journey Tribute Band for up to $6,000. So um, it may not or may come into fruition, but I do need probably some sort of commitment from the board to... We'll talk, let's talk about the other option as well so they can weigh the two, I would think. I mean, well, we have, like I said, the Dueling Piano Bands, which is 3,500. I mean, obviously both these groups are available. Um, obviously Don and I were discussing too that we can go to um, more local bands and spend a lot less money, but I'm, you know, we could still pack a lot of people downtown, but we would save ourselves some significant finances without spending money on a bigger I, organism. Do you work with a promoter to book the band, Dave, at all? No. 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 Uh, just for, it's been several years, but <clears throat> we had a journey tribute band at the Crossel that was far less expensive than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we did work with a promoter. Um, I don't want to, I mean, I have no idea what things have transpired in the last several years. And there's lots of those bands out there. Yeah, I think this is the same group that performed at your place. Because when in my conversations with him, he has told me that he was performed at your venue. So maybe just their demand is that much higher. I, I'm not sure. Are there just their fees are that much more now? I'm not sure. Yeah. I think Jerry can check that out for us. Yeah, I'm, we can talk yeah. offline if you want. Um, yeah, that's fine. Because we, yeah, there, there's the promoter, the promotion company that we work with on some of those things yeah. um, really gets us 
good, good pricing. Okay. And it's just a flat fee, sound is included, all those things can be all inclusive. Okay. Yeah, if you can reach out, that'd be great. Okay. So we're at that point now where we're putting on a fundraising event um, specific to the DDA as well. Um, and as we move forward on this piece of the Artalicious partnership, um, we really got to think, you know, what does that budget look like? What are we going to allocate for, for Dave or whoever's running that, that point? And, um, and then, of course, when we talk about stakeholders and fundraising and the like, Dave has these relationships that don't necessarily overlap um, some of our other major stakeholders. Um, and, I, and, and, they're, and they're embracing that particular part of the event. So um, I don't know what we would adopt at this point to say, hey, this is, the, this is the, your, where we would let you go from an expenditure standpoint with the expectation that he has the ability to raise most of the funds back and, and, and be a wash or a profit or a profit what we want. And now we have with the DAR district, of course, the ability to do that uh, fundraising, beer sales and the like, and that's where we'll make our, our bank. Um, I'm asking for a motion for up to 6,000 so I can at least go in negotiations if we decide to move forward with the, the journey tribute ban. That's it doesn't good. mean that I'm we are going to spend. That's just a preliminary budget budget for now just to go negotiations with them barring that maybe we find something else better from you know from jerry's side there's been a there's been a motion for up to six thousand uh, i'll budget. support there's support from brad is there further discussion i'm sure it'll be a great event uh, don't stop believing <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's been, i'll meet for that <laughs> <laughs> There's been a motion to support. Is there any uh, further discussion? Just wanted to uh, throw this out there. I think when we're looking at that event cohesively, especially with the Artalicious partnership, we have to be careful about a couple of things. One is that um, if we're going up to a $6,000 band and we're looking at this as a fundraiser, that means that we need to, of course, recoup that investment, which means more people there. Mm -hmm. Certain other things scale with more people, including the amount of trash cleanup that happens afterwards, the amount of setup that has to occur too. So at some point that becomes a pretty hard sell. And if we do move forward with something that's that high price, I'd like us to look at doing some better volunteer recruitment so that way it's not people like Don and Michelle on the streets after that, having to clean up even more cups and trash and all that. Mm -hmm. Jay will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Jay. <laughs> I think that's a great point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. David, go for it. All right. All right. And is just for my memory's sake, the, the bid we did for the band and, and the, or the stage, or I'm sorry, stage and sound, um, did it include this band, uh, this event? It included the sound and staging. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Right. For that, uh, the band was going to be a separate fundraiser, if I call it correct. That's right. Yep. Okay, good. It's clear. All right. <clears throat> Move on to economic vitality. I already talked about the riverfront and ended up in the previous discussions with Greg. And uh, Gene Christopher project, is there any movement there? Is there any more discussion, Dave, Brad? Uh, I'd like to comment on that. We had a... Um, We've had a, a general discussion that the next level of commitment from the board is to support us getting some numbers. So uh, we have a design, a preliminary design that works and uh, we're guessing it's somewhere north of 250 to maybe three or 400,000, 500,000. I don't know, depending upon how sophisticated it gets. And before the board could make any kind of uh, decision on that, we would have to have some preliminary estimates, um, and we'd like to be able to proceed to get those estimates if the board's okay with that. Absolutely. I don't see why not. Okay. Got to look at it and see if it's feasible. Yeah. So let's dig in. Any other mark, remarks on that? I want to back up to, so Mark can go ahead and, and talk about the August 27th cleanup again. We're going to do it at every meeting, by the way, until August 27th. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's not just a cleanup. We're really hoping that in the past 25 or 30 years, we've taken a section of the river within the city and done a cleanup on it. And it's a great partnership with the city of Adrian's staff and, and various community groups. This one is going to really focus on 
education and orientation on the project that's going to happen between Maumee and Maple Street, which is the project that Greg mentioned. So we really do want to uh, have a great turnout. We'd like to have a food truck. There'll be some tents for some education, River Raisin Watershed Council and others will be there. And we really want to help get a large number of community folks down there so they can see not only what we'll be doing on that section of the river, but also we, we have a wonderful riverfront right through the city, great parks. We want to educate people to use those parks. La lastly, um, I'd like to be sure that next month on our economic vitality, mm -hmm. that Gene Christopher heading, we want to change to um, business inventory or building inventory and be able to add other projects that the director is familiar with that are available. For instance, the, 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 there's a room that the uh, Joanne Steel building is for sale. There's other properties that are for sale. So we, we as a board need to know what's happening in the city in terms of real estate that's available or, and can be developed. So I think in, in into the future, if we can have some level of reporting, and you're already doing that with what the Main Street wants you to do, but I think that that area is, we, we need to develop that. Thank you. Superb. Any other comments on that? All right, thank you, Mark. All right, move on to design, um, downtown street lamps. Um, Jay, what, what did I, where were we at with that? <laughs> Sorry. We're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> we have uh, we have a lot of the uh, the components, but there are still some components that we're waiting for. Um, uh, the meeting that well, the information that I got just as of Monday was we're still waiting uh, for the I don't know what they're called, the shorter part of the shorter poles that are coming in. Um, um, that's it. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and there's no ETA on the, the arrival of those yet. Want to mention that? Can't. Yeah. So, kind of in conjunction with that, um, I'm doing some research uh, on a banner project. Uh, some some neighboring cities, Selena in particular, does a very good job with banners recognizing veterans, students. Uh, I'm going to be exploring the opportunities that, that we have um, to kind of grow that for the DDA. It, it could be a, a source of uh, income for us, um, but it will, we'll, you know. We'll make sure to engage with the businesses, but we also want to see what that looks like. Um, no, nothing set definite yet, but we're exploring it. Um, I, I've shared the the thought with the city and their um, proponents of it, so we'll we'll move forward. And when I get more definite plans, I'll, I'll definitely share that information. Excellent, thank you. And the downtown trees are continuing; they're searching for another species, so they'll continue to keep planting the trees as they get them. Supply chain stuff. Parklet, second parklet was done. Great job on, again, under pressure, under tr tremendous pressure, pulls it off in the last second. So that was really cool. Um, so I'm really glad. The ribbon cutting, we were there, but it didn't really happen. Um, I don't think. Yes, it did. Did it? Yeah. We did actually I come yeah. You did? We All right, well, then I missed it then. Sorry. <laughs> we need giant scissors. Yeah. We do need giant scissors? Yeah. I'm ordering yeah, he's, from Amazon. He's working <laughs> Jay's working on it. <laughs> yeah, we went to the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Any it was at the other on, one. What's that? It was at the other park, but we went to the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, you're at the wrong park. <laughs> the wrong park. Oh, so <laughs> well, that's why we were all mixed up. My, my fault. Again. All right. Kevin's not here. Any other discussion on parklets? Anything? I was just going to mention that it's unlikely we'll get that price again from Matt. <laughs> just so everybody knows, you know, I, you know, it, it was a lot of work. Yeah. The other thing um, I'd like to mention is I, when I go to work, I always drive through downtown. It's just, it's the easiest route anyways. Plus I always like to drive through downtown and those parklets are busy a lot, like, all the time. Like, I can't believe how much they're being utilized and it's very exciting to see, um, you know, now that the weather has gotten nicer, especially even at night, cause it cools down a little bit and I think people wanna be out there. Um, but I've been very um, impressed and excited by seeing how utilized they are. Awesome. Any other discussion on park bits? All right, and um, we can Midwest Sculpture Project. Kevin's not here, nor the canopy lighting. You already heard about sculpture damage and the working on policy um, that, that Jay talked about about sequence and who to contact and, and things like that. A new sculpture was installed yesterday. It was. Oh, good. 
and I know that the um, the donation side of it, monies are coming in for that, and I've been sharing that with uh, with the, with uh, the folks at Plainwood. Excellent. All right, I'm going to hand it back over to Jay. So I, I set you up uh, with the reporting aspect, um, so you guys can take a look at kind of what the, the some of the basic responsibilities I have are. Um, Mark did a great job of helping me unknowingly uh, setting up information such as building inventory. Uh, Michelle, can you pull up the the next software, please? So in my first couple of weeks, I've been looking for um, a, a few things. Uh, we need a CRM to manage our business owners, our building owners, our volunteers, our sponsors. Um, we need a project management tool to help with the projects that we have to help manage those. We need a volunteer sign up, you know, form, um, something similar to sign up genius. Uh, so I was on a discussion board with National Main Street and reaching out and, and there was a myriad of responses. Um, some people use Trello for project management and home base for project management and different CRM tools, Salesforce and all of these things. Um, then I, I found Maestro. Maestro is a program that was designed by a Main Street director um, while he was a Main Street director. Now he actually is a part owner of the software. Um, the unique thing about this software is it's only, it's, it's designed around Main Street. It's not only for use in Main Street, but it touches on those components. So at the top you see organization, economic vitality. Um, I can't read it from here. Promotion, promotion and design. And each one of those, you can set up widgets within the program to do it. Along the left-hand column, you'll see the home screen. Um, the first one is uh, contacts. And I think it's, it, yeah, click on that one, Michelle. So there's your contacts. Go ahead and click on that contact form. So it gives you a listing and then just grab one to click on if you would, please. And it opens up and it gives you all the information you would need there, their basic information, if they're involved with programs, if they, you know, if they're a sponsor, if they're a volunteer, all of those things in one spot. Um, it gives me a place to add notes, um, to add, to update information, projects they're involved with. Um, it's pretty slick. It, you can do the building inventory. It allows you to take building inventory, differentiate between commercial and residential. Um, it gives you the opportunity to track vent, to track volunteers, volunteer hours. There's functionality as sign up genius, so you can set up what that would look like. So for example, if Don had um, Artelicious on there and he needed two people at eight, two people at 10, four people at noon, you populate all that and send it to your list of volunteers and they sign up. What they do when they're done, they go in, click on it, it adds their hours and it goes away. And so then it comes to the database for me, I track it. The new, they have a release coming out in June which makes that functionality incredible. I mean, just the reporting aspect of it is phenomenal. Um, work, work organization, it's basically like that. It's basically like that. You know, like the project management tool. And that's, and then the morning. Go to the morning. This is click on that. This is, this is being expanded. Um, and then you do the very detailed reporting down to time frames and properties and et cetera. Uh, go back up to the home screen, Michelle, please. Up to the home button. If you click on there and I'll scroll down a little bit, you see where the, the dashboard is there. It'll give you anything from tasks, uh, occupancy rates, return on investment dollars, whether it's public versus private, um, occupancy rates, cost per square footage. It requires the database to be updated uh, and provide that information. So there's two things that I really love about this, this software besides all of this part, right? There, there's, it, wait, there's more. Um, there's a mobile app. So if I go into the Croswell and talk to Jerry and I wanna record my conversation or update some information she gave me, I can do it right there live. And it instantly gets updated. It's cloud-based. So there's no having to worry about putting it on a server or saving it. Don't have to worry about the type of technology you have, whether it's Windows or Apple. Uh, the next thing, I have the ability to put eight different security levels. There, there are eight different security levels that come in this tool. That allows me to give all of you access to the information. 
um, depending on what security level we want. We can take it as low as volunteers, so they only see the tasks that they've signed up for, all the way up to admin where you have total control in various levels in between. Um, so if we give board members and we want to make sure the proprietary information from projects that are being communicated are re restricted, we can do that. So you can see some, but not all. Others can see all. Um, and it's fifty dollars a month. Can I just interrupt you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can I just make a motion to support the purchase of lights? <laughs> yeah, so moved. Uh, all right. Any further discussion? Well, well yeah. Favor, aye. Yeah, Thank I'd you. like to say a few things. I mean, obviously, CRM is absolutely critical. And my suggestion is, well, number one, we have a three thousand dollar office supply budget line item, so I don't even know if this needs to be approved through the board, but we will anyway. But I, I would like to tack on that we add a. We had a, mail, a MailChimp monthly uh, email list so that we can at least get that started. It's $11 a month for up to 10,000 or whatever, you know, emails or whatever. So that way with all the volunteers that he's plugging into this stuff, he can generate a quick report and email all volunteers for a particular project or whatever, whatever have you. So, so I would you know, add on another $120 or whatever for a MailChimp to whatever motion. Yes, okay. friendly amendment accepted. <laughs> motion has been amended. Do you support? Yes. Support now. Dollar amount. So the total dollar amount would be seven hundred dollars for annual for Mailchimp and Maestro. Jay, I'd like to remind you that the average tenure of your position is two point one two years. So uh, I, I think one obligation you'd want to have is is that this software can be wonderful if it's integrated into the whole board. So part of your responsibility will be to train us, and that's going to be your biggest challenge. Yeah. Uh, one more question for you, Jay. Do you know it, it, for to create individual accounts for other board members, is is there licensing fees for individual? Nope. They, they had unlimited accounts for fifty dollars. Unlimited accounts. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it. I. I kept waiting for the the shoe to drop, and it did. And I'm like, okay, I know you're on an AWS server, right? How about storage restrictions? No. <laughs> so, so I'm like, done. So I think the bigger benefit that we talked about was it's going to um, lower the cumbersomeness of reporting to Main Street on a monthly basis because he can put those reports and it'll be instant. And that's not trying to compile it right before the day it's due. Right. So um, there's been a motion that's been supported. Now, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Again, I will. Um, Jay and I'll talk before the next meeting, and if there's budgetary, um, you know, that he has a budget of his own, and these types of items um, may not need to come in front of the board, so it's so cumbersome, um, he can just make decisions on that front. So we'll move forward. Next thing I want to bring up to you are really two uh, training opportunities. Um, the first one is probably not anyone's cup of tea. I don't know if it's mine. Uh, building codes on Main Street. Um, it's a three day virtual workshop uh, to give me to, to really give me that foundation to help share that with our, our project development work with bu building owners, you know, learn some unique things how to do change of use and, and things of that nature it's $175 uh, I'm really just asking that so I can attend those trainings motion there's been a motion is there support support, support. all right any further discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed the same. Next. And then the last one um, is through Michigan, through National Main Street, they have a certification program so I can become, I can't even find it. Um, it it's a National Main Street accreditation. accreditation program. And the first training program in there is Advanced Principles of Leadership Development. Um, it's $275. It's over three, three uh, hour and a half, over three days with the final testing. That's the first uh, certification in the credential program. It's a two-year program. Um, it, it provides credibility to both our main street and, and, and engaging business in the future. So I ask that you, uh, yep, for this first, for this first class, the total, the total uh, accredit accreditation is $4,150. So over the two years is what it would be. But this first one is just $275. So can we clear it up by just doing the 4150 over the next few years? Well, we, we actually have a training line item budget this year. This current fiscal year, we have $1,000, which hasn't been touched at all. Okay. And next year, I believe we bumped it per request of Main Street for the budgeting. budgeting, And so it's larger next year. And I think they're both going to, that would cover all of this. Okay. So 
Oh, okay. You know, I would say approach the board if it's more than five hundred dollars. But if it's Main Street related, and you're within budget, perfect. That's what I would recommend. That's what I would recommend as the treasurer. <laughs> for today, we'll just take a motion for you know for that. And sure. And then going forward, we'll make sure we have a presentation of how he's going to use the budget. Yep. For all that. All right. Sounds good. So, motion to approve a total of forty-one fifty for National Main Street accreditation. Is that the motion or two seventy-five? Where are we at? I thought we were going for the whole Let's thing. Go for the whole thing uh -huh. for the two years, right? Okay. Yep. All right. So there's there's motion for that. So moved. Is there support? Support. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. Awesome. I would. I would. I really told him I would be excited to go to that building code with him, but it was had <laughs> a conflict. Yeesh. Um, all right. Anything from Tim? Uh, just a brief update. Um, one of the things that we're working on with the Armory right now is uh, we're redoing, re relaunching Square One. You know, the COVID put a hip, hiccup in our Square One business pitch competition. So October 18th at Mark's Place, uh, we've jacked up the uh, the prizes from I think it was $1,200 when we did it last time to 5,000. Again, <laughs> someone had to be the first one in jay <laughs> our, our business happened to be the first one that's why i'm giving to the um yeah the uh the the, the premise of the, the pitch competition is that the the, the uh, applications will go online on our website july 1st um the premise is you get five minutes and basically five powerpoint slides to pitch your business idea it's not a business plan competition it's like here's my idea and we have a slew of judges they'll pick we have two awards one's the idea genius award that Jay and Gwen won um, several years ago, and then the audience participation award that the audience actually gets to pick, which we had fun with last time. Um, on top of that, one of the big things we're working on right now, as I'm sure you're all aware, um, is uh, talent. Everybody needs talent, working on talent. We've bought uh, a learning management system so we can help local client, uh, companies. This thing has 286 curriculums on it that we can offer to the companies. It'll be uh, good for onboarding if they or if they want to add their own curriculum, if they want to add their own onboarding 30 minute webinar, whatever you want to call it, or hour, or some of these are multi day. Uh, this thing can do it and it can track the employees' training for the employer. So if they'll know that Bill and Sam and Irv did this training as they were required or reports back to the, the, the company that Bill didn't. <laughs> um, so again, lots of stuff going on, but those are the two major things right now. Uh, Don said I couldn't give my 30 minute presentation, but okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you. Any questions for Tim? All right, thank you. Is there any cost associated for the businesses to use the, to use the LMS? Yeah. Okay. We're working on all the good fun stuff now. All right, we're at your comments and, and I should have done this at the beginning of the meeting, but can we all um, welcome Jeff Rising to the DDA? No, Jeff was former commissioner and he's given back to the community um, for a long time and he, he was excited to get involved with the DDA. Um, and of course he's made some big investments in our downtown as well. So thank you so much for being here. And I promise we learned that we don't have a package to give to a new DDA board member and we really failed and we sent the uh, agendas to the wrong email address for Jeff. So he came in here without any knowledge of what's going on. So I want to again apologize for that behavior. Um, we'll be better next time. <laughs> Um, also, I brought with me today the ethics policy that the, uh, that the employees and commissioners and all um, sign on behalf of the city. And we adopted this in 2018, and that's when we last had signatures. So I'm going to pass this around and everybody review their ethics policy. Um, I'd like to have everybody sign that. And just it's, it's just a code of conduct, and, um, and it's just good practice, best practices for all of us to have. So you can turn that into me now, or we, we can send it to me after you have a chance to review it. That update. All right. Is there this time for public comment? Uh, Don Taylor, 475 Meadowbrook Drive. I, uh, boy, kudos to First Friday crew. Um, when I have to stand in line at hooligans for 10 minutes to get a beer, I know things are good. 
It was 15 minutes at the brick wall <laughs> and 35 minutes to get into sauce at 8.30. So we had to listen to the band. That was really tough to do, you know. So speaking of bands and, you know, you all know what my relationship is with David Thomas. So he's my fourth son. Um, I love Journey. If Journey doesn't work out, David, I'll, I'll say this publicly now. <laughs> I'd like to see us think local for our delicious. We already have Los Hermanos under contract to play in the afternoon that we're funding. There's a two hour slot that we kept open because David wanted to have some flexibility. We could do a band there. We could do a couple of bands at night. There's some great talent here. Um, you know, if you've never heard Mark Murray and his group play, they bring out the, the crowd. So anyway, just, Think local, it's our 15th anniversary. It'd be kind of nice to focus on that, but if not, we'll be there partying and partying, so, and cleaning up too. <laughs> Don, I've got your cash when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comment? Uh, I would just like to say that I, I agree with Don. I think, um, you know, we, we use local bands for First Fridays and I literally every week I have someone else emailing me or messaging me saying, how can I be a part of First Fridays? We want to come play. Um, local bands usually have a really good following. I kind of like the idea of having a few local bands follow each other. Um, so if it doesn't work out with, you know, the journey band, I, I think that's a great idea. Excellent. Any other public comment? All right. Any other DDA matters? at this point or board member comments i have to i have to bring up something sorry um there was an error on this report that i got from the city the revenue and expenditure report i <coughs> noticed it during this meeting <laughs> um there's about sixty thousand dollars of expenses missing from page two <laughs> the parking lot wasn't on there for some reason i just got an email from them and they said that oops they left it off so we have 60000 less on the net at the bottom line there. It looked wrong to me. So Does that mean we don't have to pay for it? Mm, I wish. Uh, no, so they gave me the revised one, and I'll send it out to everybody via email, just for everybody's records. So. Just wanted to comment that I believe our sound provider also has really, really good pull with local bands oh. as well. So he might be a good resource to tap into for some alternatives. Mm -hmm. Dusty, I um, um, was able to attend a nonprofit board training that was uh, sponsored by the uh, Lenoir Area Chamber and uh, had done one previously with the foundation. I think it'd be really good for us to have a packet of material that really took a look at board responsibilities and obligations um, that is you know, pretty formal. It doesn't have to be a lot, but three or four pages of obligations and commitments that a board member ought to make and that should be uh, reviewed prior to them. I have some materials from that, if it can be helpful to put that together. Um, the farmer's market, just wanna congratulate the city and uh, the staff that are putting that together. And Jay, you've done a wonderful job. Um, the Alias Band, hopefully, if it's not running, will be playing at this coming Saturday's market for a couple hours and um, get down there. I've been there, everyone, the, the, the produce is fantastic. and. Uh, talk it up, get there, visit it, spend some money and talk it up. Thank you. And one comment. Um, first of all, thanks for accepting me to your board. That's it's amazing. I love being here and helping out the city of Adrian. Uh, what Mark had mentioned about the building inventory list. I would love to help with that. Um, you know, there are buildings for sale downtown uh, that apparently no one knows about because they're, they're listed online. So uh, the biggest thing is apartments. I would love to have a master apartment availability list on the city website. Uh, you know, just as a function of our real estate market, landlords simply don't use realtors because you don't need to, right? You just post it online. You have it rented in like five seconds. Why pay someone? I get that. But the difficulty is someone calls Don. Don says, I don't have anything called Jeff. So they call me. I don't have anything called Chips. Now it's just we're sending them on this wild goose chase to try to find an apartment when we could just contact all the building owners and say, hey, can you just please keep, keep us updated when you have an open apartment, put it on the city website. Uh, if there's any uh, state law licensing requirements with that, you know, I do have a separate broker's license at home that's not affiliated with my Remax office. We could jump off of that broker license to put them on the city website if, that, if that's required by the state licensing department, because you know, 
Um, just it is who they are. A realtor is going to complain when the city lists a bunch of properties on their website. It's going to happen. <laughs> so as long as we have a broker, a broker license behind it, there shouldn't be an issue. Um, I will not profit from that. I'm not asking for anything like right. that, you know. Um, but then, yes, and I would love to, whoever's in charge of this uh, building inventory thing, I would love to participate and help out with that. You are. All right. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> oh, wait, did I just form my own committee? And, yeah. I think, you'd be, I think you'd, be, you'd be a great addition for that. Perfect. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I want to show you how we collaborate, by the way. <laughs> did you know this, Don? About Jay? I, I do, and I'm trying not to remember it. <laughs> well, I can overlook it. <laughs> That's why they put this little wall here so the audience can maintain neutrality. <laughs> Any other board comments or board matters? Mr. Chair, one more. Um, it, we've talked about this in the past that that uh, as best as we can, we'd like to get to a position of where the information is coming to this board, particularly if it's a vote on something, gets to us well in advance of um, so it, it may look like when the executive committee meets mid month from this meeting that after that an agenda comes out with some items that we would be voting on or be interested in. Um, we've talked before about the problems of having to vote on something that we get within 24 hours of the time that the meeting is so I'm looking forward to our new director getting that information to us in advance of the vote so that we can ask questions of the director in advance of it so it's not a matter of being fresh here the first time and having to vote on it. Thank you. Um, Jay's going to make me look really bad here because he's going to get in front of all this so. Um, so yeah, we have an executive meeting that we do about a week prior to that. So maybe we could adjust that a little bit if we needed to. Um, but I think uh, there's a couple other things too. You want to see the minutes from the previous meeting and then you want to see what's coming up. Um, and so the faster we can get that out, the better. Jay? One of the things that, I, that I'm going to do, Dusty, is I'm going to establish a regular cadence just to provide information. So probably every two weeks send out some updates, what I'm working on, what's going on, what to prepare for. That way we've got, you know, regular cadence. So probably, you know, we're week two. So week three and week one, I'll start sending some emails out during that time to, to really help the communication and maybe save you some time while we're here as well. I had one question. If, if there is an update uh, on the T-Mobile grant or when we'll hear about that. Great question, Michelle. <laughs> I haven't heard anything yet. Um, the last one they announced, um, I want to say at least 60 days after people had applied. So I would expect we would hear something maybe by the end of this month would be my guess. Excellent. Oh, and I wanted to mention to the conversation about um, electric car charger ports. So when we were getting ready to apply for the T-Mobile grant, we took that into consideration. And the way we set up how we would do the electrical over at the farmer's market allows for expansion later on so that we could possibly put in another charger in that lot. So we are kind of thinking ahead with that. That's awesome. I have a quick question about the chargers. Have you guys thought about partnering with Tesla? Uh, they offer free installation and they do the upkeep and everything like that. You just have to provide the space for them to put their chargers in. And then as Mark probably knows, it goes on your map and integrates right into their cars so it would draw you know tesla drivers right to downtown are those, are, this is a dumb question but are tesla chargers able to charge other electric vehicles or are they specific to tesla i mean this is tesla which is the only downfall of it but people can have the capacity and honestly most of them i've seen 900 teslas teslas have changed they have I like to suggest that everybody really does read this before we sign it. I, I just think that's a part of the obligation of being on this board is to actually know what we're doing. And I, you know, in the it, it would be important to me and, and I think to all of us if we read it and that know what that obligation is and that we're supposed to hold that culture and responsibility. So with by signing it without looking at it, I don't think it's a good move. Excellent. Thank you for that. I, I, my final comments here would be that we're at the start of something new here. 
we really have um, hired, I think, the, the right person. Um, local boy knows the knows the um, everything on the ground. Has a great relationship with Michelle, and he's doing the bang up job. Um, and they're working right across from one another. Um, I, you know, we we I wouldn't concern yourself. Um, we want we could have that thought in our head as whether or not Jay would be um, drifting to city type work outside uh, the the DDA and the Main Street focus. And he assures me, and I I believe it. I can see it that that will not be the case, that he'll stay and maintain his focus directly on our, our area. So I think the commissioners understand that. Greg understands that. Everybody understands that we keep our lines of communication open about that clearly. Mm -hmm. And Jay is all about transparency. He talks about it. And, and the fact that he'll call me when anything hits him um, as far as what he thinks he needs to disclose. So um, I appreciate that. And again, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? matters for the DDA on this meeting. We're going to shut this one down and, and then open one back up. So any other comments? You need to go to the rest? <laughs> Want to take a five minute break? All right, five minute break. So any other things? I'll adjourn this meeting. We'll take a five minute break and then reconvene and we just need to do a quick annual meeting and, and put the officers in place. Thank you. Well, uh, Councilman Adrian. Reporting in progress. Adrian uh, Main Street Board. Um, and we already have done roll call. And of course, they're going to get a motion for this agenda to approve this agenda. There's been a motion. Is there support? support. Motion and support. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. We're coming, since this is our annual meeting, my term has come to, I was going to say an end, but to renewal or <laughs> for the board of the city commission to approve. Kevin I, it's the other one whose four year term has come. Um, up and needs to be again approved by um, the city commission. So before anything, before I talk about the officers, um, I'm willing to continue to work for the next four years hard. Um, and I'm sure Kevin is excited to maintain his position here. A motion to approve uh, Dusty and Kevin to for your terms to the DDA board. There's been motions or support. 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 All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. And really, Mayor, it's really your prerogative. So thank you. If you, if you want to throw me off, you can too. Mm. Whatever. All right. <laughs> Next to the election officers, um, I will continue and, and I'm very humbled and pleased to be the chairperson. Um, and I want to thank all of you for for your support in that. Um, I, and I love this organization and it keeps getting better and better every day. Dave has agreed and he would like to maintain it, vice chair. And, and Brad agreed to continue as treasurer. I remember when we first started, Brad was trying to get off. And now he's been stuck for another four. There you go. And then Meredith is sec secretary. Um, so I'll entertain a motion. So moved. There's been a motion, is there support? Is there any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Brad presented the finance committee report earlier. Um, we'll just take again another motion for the annual meeting. Is there a motion to accept his financial report with the adjustment of the $60,000? So moved. There's, there's, there's support. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Just want to go back and I want you to help out because I was trying to write them down, but we became Main Street Select this year and, and that was a big deal or last year when it happened. Um, there's a tremendous amount of work that went down and we got ourselves in and uh, Drake, thank you for that video. That was great. And there was a lot of work on the application. I want to thank uh, Michelle too and, and everybody that helped, including my assistant, Ashley. She did a lot of good work too. We had it all spread out in my office and we got that application in. Presentation went well. That was a lot of work last year. That was quite a bit of work. Um, we hired Jay and um, we had the Phoenix Theory show up at Our Delicious, which just rocked the house all the way through the city. You could hear it at my house. Um, we created parklets. I mean, we've done, we've done some things that I go back to Brad again, is what can we point towards that this DDA has done when we first started and now we can. We're starting to point towards things we're accomplishing. And, it's, it's really great stuff and there's a lot of great stuff coming. The momentum is heavy and big. Um, and so I'm looking forward. Anybody else can think of some things that we hit this last year? There's a real focus on Main Street. 
Uh, I think the functionality of the, of the group and the ability to work together, uh, when we compare it to two or three years ago, it's unbelievably better. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. I just want to um, compliment the city, Michelle, Greg, and all the department heads with um, all the work that they've done and the continued partnership that we have with the city, with the chamber, with Lenaway Now, and all the other organizations. I think that is really the key to success moving forward is continuing on with those partnerships. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, yes, Michael. I think adding the DARA districts um, was another big one. Um, and is this our first year of the EV charging stations that came up a couple of times today? It's been a couple of years now. Is it two now? years now? Two years ago. Okay. Two years ago. Two, DARA was two years ago. It was on my was last it? Okay. report. Was it? Yeah. Okay. I, we can celebrate the change in, in the legislation. Yes. Yeah, that happened in the last year. That made a yeah. massive difference and changed the fundraising aspect of our downtown as a venue and everything changed the whole whole thing. Mm -hmm. So um, awesome. I'd also like to recognize and thank Dusty for his leadership in getting us to the point where we can now leverage the time and talents of somebody like Jay to then take us to the next level yet again. So thank you, Dusty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other? Big accomplishments. Uh, it took a long time to find that uh, right mix for the executive director, and I just can't imagine a better candidate and a better director than Jay Mark's going to be for our group. And that brings me to thanking the interview committee, which changed a little bit. But how much of a commitment was that? That was one year of interviews. And Michael, yeah. thank you for being there. And then Mayor, everybody, yeah. we went through a lot. We re it. We looked back and rehashed. We were getting into a a feeling like we're never going to find someone and uh and then jay appeared so what a great thing any others public comment other dda matters board member comments thank you all so much we'll adjourn